Hey, today we're going to be talking to you about Divine Mercy. A couple weeks ago on our channel we had a video called Love Thy Neighbor and at the end of that video we did a decade of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Today we're going to be talking about the feast that's associated with this chaplet. Divine Mercy Chaplet is a beautiful devotion that focuses on calling to God for His mercy to be shed upon us and the whole world because of the passion. Passion means not passion, I'm very passionate about something, but passion is the sufferings that Christ endured on his way to the cross to take use of those sufferings. So there's going to be a link on this page to take you to a website that will teach you how to say a Divine Mercy Chaplet in full. And the Lord really wants us to say this chaplet, not just on Divine Mercy, the feast, not just during Lent, but every day. He wants us to pray because it's the, one of the most powerful prayers there is. He says, between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m., He wants us to stop, and if we have time, He wants us to say a chaplet for to have mercy on us, the whole world, and especially for those who are dying. And we'll talk more in this next video why for those who are dying. But I encourage you, adopt this practice of saying the chaplet. It's a beautiful prayer. Hello everyone, Tina Getz here with St. John's Faith Formation. I'm here today with Lauren Beckman. Hi Lauren. How are you? Good, good to see you. You too. So you're a parishioner of St. John the Baptist Church here. Yes, I am. How long have you been a parishioner? Close to 30 years, I would assume. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. So, how have you been doing with all this COVID-19? Well, it's been a struggle of not being able to come to Mass naturally and right. all of the, especially uh, Adoration Chapel. Yeah, that's so, really hard. But I guess I've been thinking about it and it's kind of given me more of a chance to develop different ways to reach out to God and instead of more of the exterior things, now I have to go interiorly, be attuned to what His voice is telling me. Yeah, that's really struck me. I, I've been really reflecting on Christ miss us as much as we miss Him in the sacrament of the, of the Eucharist and He yearns to be with us. And even though we mentally have to put ourselves there thinking, is my getting the true graces from the spiritual communion? We have to trust that he's going to work through that because of the circumstances we're under, right? Because I was even like when in the Eucharistic prayer uh, from the um, morning till the evening, all these sacrifices that are done throughout the world, God is then offering, or Jesus offering back to the Father. Mm -hmm. So even though, yeah, we can't go to Mass, we still need to do it as best as we can because... We still need to offer for atonement of sins. For atonement of sins, yeah, yes. right. So, speaking of atonement for fit sins, so this Sunday it's a super big feast. It's kind of been forgotten about, and now in the last, let's say, 20, 30 years with Pope John Paul II, it's been revived. It's called the Feast of Divine Mercy, and so it's on the eighth day of Easter. Yeah. So often. I know that you have brought the celebration of Saint John's for us to make it an important feast at our parish. So tell me about um, how are you drawn to this devotion? Well, when I was younger, I, there used to be certain um, celebrations that were on at other parishes, and I went to them, and somehow or other, Jesus drew, drew me into it. As I learned more about it, I realized how what an awesome grace that God gives us through this by right. taking our sins away completely, you know, as if it's like baptism again. It's like there's absolutely no sin after this point at all when you fulfill the, you know, the things that Jesus asks us to do for Divine right. Mercy Sunday. Right. Isn't this great? So eight days after Easter, coming off of Good Friday, the pain that Christ went through shows how much God detests sin. And I don't think we, we think about that very much. But then he's eight days later, he's like, look oh, what everything I went through for you. It's for you. And now bring me all of your sin. Bring me all of your pains and suffering on this one special day. They say that Easter is the greatest feast of the church, but mm -hmm. this is Divine Mercy Sunday, they say, is almost as important because what the Lord is asking for us to come to him, and he's willing to take away our sin. The floodgates of mercy are open on that day. Right. And, and not only that, whatever we ask that's in alignment with his will. So we could be praying for the end of COVID. We could be praying for... You know, all the tens of thousands of people who have died in New York. Um, we could be praying for, maybe you're, you're with a loss of a job. Again, this isn't like a magic wand where the Lord's going to be like, poof, okay, because you prayed me, I'm going to grant what you wish. But it's a chance to just ask. And we never know. Great 
conversions can happen through this. We can pay for our previous loved ones who have who have died to get them to heaven. Um, it's just a great a great feast. And you had mentioned you know now with this pandemic, because this is a worldwide you know right. And when we say it for the saints of and also for the whole world, whole we world. add that. So it's like. If a, a prayer that really would be helpful for everyone right. is the Chapel of Divine Mercy. Right, that's, that's right. What the timing of this is amazing too. You're right, because we're praying for the whole world, and we say that in the prayer for our sins and those of the whole world. What about the image? So this is an important image. St. Faustina had this, Im this image commissioned. It was a very important image, and there's great graces that can even come from the image. Right, because uh, one of the things that Jesus asked uh, St. Faustina to do, or I should say St is to have an image painted and she went through a lot of pains because the images just didn't reflect how the beauty and whatever had Jesus had but finally she had one that was acceptable and the two rays represent you know naturally the blood and water that flowed from Christ's side at his as, after his death and uh, white represents the waters of baptism and then the red represents the Holy Eucharist okay, so right. those are very important uh, things right. with the image itself right. and and Jesus asked us to put the images in our houses and stuff and he will personally bless them and protect them which is right. really a comfort in itself. Right. I think I heard something like during World War II yeah. that there was a house that had the image of the Divine Mercy in it and the town had been bombed and that house was remaining standing and everything else was just leveled. leveled but that house. So this is really important. I actually saw it on the Divine Mercy website. They say that we should be putting this image on our door, door posts now they're not going to say again, this is your magic wand to prevent you from getting, the, from getting sick or anything bad happening to you, but we, it's, it's telling the Lord you're putting trust in Him, and your house is going to follow Him, and, and who knows how He's going to honor that, but um, why not, right? Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so at the bottom it says, Jesus, I trust in you. What is that about? It's a matter of where you are in your life, no matter you know, what you're doing, anything that bothers you or anything that you're concerned about, bring it to Him. Right. Right. So we have to just remember that we, the Lord really wants us to use those words, Jesus, I trust in you, right, to trust in him. And isn't that what love is all about? When you love someone, you, you hope that you trust in their love for you, and we have to trust in them. And no matter what we've done, no matter how we've strayed, no matter how faithful we are or unfaithful, he's always going to, to love us. We just have to respond to his love and ask for his mercy and hopefully change our ways through his grace, right? Yeah. And then uh, the other thing is, ask for his mercy, but then he's also asking us to be merciful to others. Right. So there's, so there's some steps we should take on the, on the Feast of Divine Mercy specifically. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what those are? On Divine Mercy Sunday itself, he's asking that you have gone to confession at least within 20 days before the celebration, and also that you receive Holy Communion with the intent that you want to receive the graces of mercy. Right. And so with that, it even it's uh, becomes such a, a great mercy. It's like having uh, baptism again because in a plenary of indulgence, uh, granted it takes away all sin, but you have the one stipulation is that you, before you do it, that you're not in any sin at whatsoever. Right. Where here there's actually, I mean, God's given that open to, right. you can receive it. Right, Within he's, he's just saying he's given it to you. I also heard too you can do up to a couple days after, because I know confession now, this, this won't view till Saturday. Some people may have missed the opportunity to confession. I've heard it's, it's also open God's out of space and time, but you can also do it after the feast. Even yes. if, you've been, if you went during Lent, that will suffice. So that's great. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's a great feast, and, and I think we just have to remember we should be taking advantage of this because God... Jesus came to St. Faustina saying, tell the world my message of love and mercy. And mercy is just saying he wants to forgive us. And if we don't, if we don't ask for his forgiveness, we're not allowing him to do what he does, which is be our Savior, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so take advantage of Divine Mercy Sunday. And, 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 and even every day um, at the 3 o'clock hour, Jesus asks that if you ask for special graces and, and, uh, and just kind of say a little prayer like, you know, the old oh, blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Trust in you. And there again, he shows, you know, it opens up the floodgates for grace. Right, yeah. so that's another thing we have to do on Divine Mercy Sunday is say the chaplet. At yes, and even too, like, if you happen to be with a loved one or whoever is really sick or is even on their deathbed, the one prayer that will really gain them all the most graces is the chaplet right. of Divine Mercy. Yes. 
Yes, and that's why it's important that we say this prayer, especially for those who are dying, at the hour of the death is a very vulnerable time for the dying. Do you, would, do you know anything about that, Lauren? About Well, because it, it's kind of at the, at the hour of death is when sort of in a certain sense of judgment, I mean, it's in, in the respect that the devil has one last chance, you know, to kind of take your soul. Right. And so with the superabundance of grace that God provides, you just, there's just that comfort and consolation that he gives you right. knowing that, you know, I'm in your care and right. I'm in your arms now for all eternity. So, right. so it's a very wonderful uh, right. prayer. All right. Well, praise be to God. So thanks, Lauren. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank all you right. for and, asking me. And there will be a special service on the afternoon of Divine Mercy Sunday. Yes. Yes. And we can stream that. Stream it. It starts at 2 o'clock. We'll end at 3.30. Okay. And uh, Father is, and we'll have the, the rosary and the chaplet, all the prayers that uh, are for Divine Mercy Sunday. Great. And we don't have to partake in that service no, to, to receive the graces, but it's just a nice way to honor the Lord on that day. Yes, it is. All right, great. Thank all you. Right. All right, thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you.